Um, hello, I'm Jiawei, and um, this is joint work with my advisor, Russell. Um, first, um, let me introduce the well-known orthogonal vectors problem. We are given an, a set of n Boolean vectors of dimension d, and usually we consider the dimension d is between logarithmic of n and n to the little o of 1. And we want to decide whether there exists vector u and v such that their dot product is zero. And when d is logarithmic of n, there is a simple algorithm that runs in n squared times log n, and the best algorithm by um, by Abud Williams and Yu runs in this amount of time. And uh, the orthogonal vectors conjecture says um, this problem with d equals logarithmic of n requires time n to the um, 2 minus little of one, of 1. Um, that means this problem cannot be solved in subquadratic time, and uh, this conjecture is implied by strong ETH. Uh, here is the graph of the reductions. Um, from the NP-complete world, we have a case in f set problem, and in the polynomial time world, we have orthogonal vectors. And uh, here is a here is a reduction from the, and the case in FSAT to OV saying that if the latter has a subquadratic time algorithm, then case in FSAT can be solved faster than 2 to the n. And there are a lot of uh, re reductions reducing uh, from uh, orthogonal vectors to, mm, to mm, these problems, including edge distance, LCS, Fréchet distance, sparse graph diameter, local alignment, and longest common substring. Mm, our motivation is that the case in F set is a complete problem in the uh, in the NP world, and in the polynomial world, we want to find a, uh, we want to find a completeness of uh, problems. Mm, so we show that, that there is a sparse case of orthogonal vectors problem. That uh, OV is a, a special case uh, of this problem, and we can also show that on all these uh, gray arrows, mm, still holds true. If we replace orthogonal vector, uh, if we replace sparse orthogonal vectors uh, here. And we also introduce a class of problems, which we call first-order graph properties. And it includes the problems like heating set, k-click, and the k-dominating set, and many other problems. Sparse orthogonal vectors is contained in this class. And we also show that this class of problems are reduced to sparse OV, or sparse OV is complete in this class of problems. Next, we show what the sparse OV problem means. It is equivalent with the two disjoint sets problem. Here, we, we give the input as a, a bipartite graph with M edges. And, and, and on the left side are the, uh, are the sets, and on the right side are the elements. If an element belongs to a set, we create an edge between them. And, and, the, in, and the input is the list of all the M edges. And the output is to decide whether there exist uh, two, uh, two sets that they are disjoint. Here, in, here we can see that the orthogonal vectors problem and, and the, the two disjoint sets problems are equivalent if we consider the orthogonal vectors problem in a sparse way, where we only record the ones and the, don't put the zeros in the input. So, so we say orthogonal vectors is a special case of two disjoint sets problem where the bipartite graph is very unbalanced. Here the, uh, here the right side is logarithmically small to the left side. And our question is to decide whether the bipartite graph satisfies this logic formula, where there exists a set S1, exists a set S2, such that for all the elements, we have either the element is not contained in S1 or is not contained in S2. Similarly, 
we have a sparse case of uh, orthogonal vectors conjecture um, where we replace the time uh, and we, we replace the parameter n with the parameter m. Next, let me introduce the first order graph property. By graphs, we mean a bunch of binary relations plus a bunch of unary relations. And we have a fixed first order formula phi with k plus one quantifiers. The quantifiers are either there exist or for all. The input is a graph G with the n vertices and m edges. Note that the input size is, the, uh, is m. Mm, and we say the model checking problem for formula phi is to decide whether G satisfies phi. Here are some examples. The heating set problem is to decide whether there exists a heating set H such that for all other sets S, there exists an element that is a common element in the heating set and this set. And in the k-click problem, we want to decide um, if there exists uh, k vertices such that there is a pair of edge between uh, there is an edge between all pairs of vertices. And the uh, k-dominating set is to decide whether there exists k vertices such that for all other vertices um, there there is at least an edge from the dominating set vertex to this vertex, and. Uh, the k orthogonal vectors problem is to de decide if there exists k vectors such that for all indices, at least uh, for some uh, vector, there is a zero on this vertex, on, on, on this index. Mm. By a simple uh, recursive algorithm, we can show this. Uh, uh, the model checking for k plus one quantifier formula is solvable in time n to the k minus one times m, and we conjecture it requires time uh, m to the k. And this conjecture is uh, implied by strong ETH and the uh, orthogonal vectors conjecture, and we can call it model checking conjecture. So, without loss of generality, we can assume the, the number of input size, uh, uh, the, uh, the input size, which is the number of edges, is near linear to the number of nodes. Because otherwise, we can just use the simple algorithm above. So we can, we can always assume the graph is sparse in this case. And for the dense graphs, Ryan Williams showed that it is decidable in time n to the k minus 2 plus omega, where omega is the matrix multiplication exponent. And when k is greater than or equal to 9, it is decidable in time n to the k. And an uh, under strong ETH, it requires time unto the k, so this bound is tight where k is at least 9. Uh, our main result is, uh, is we show that the two, or so, uh, the two disjoint sets problem is hard for model checking on graphs under randomized reductions. Or we can say the model checking conjecture is just another name for sparse orthogonal vectors conjecture. Um, our theorem states that if two disjoint sets has the subquadratic time algorithms, then the model checking for a k plus one quantifier formula can be solved in time less than m to the k. Um, uh, to prove this result, we use fine grain reductions. We say for problem pi one with time t one, it is fine grain reducible to problem pi two with time t two, if the reduction can preserve the fine grain time complexity of problems, or we can say if pi two can be solved substantially faster than t two, then pi one can be solved substantially faster than t one. We can show that uh, for um, for k plus one quantifier problems, there is a fine grain reduction to k quantifier problems. Th this can be done by an uh, exhaustive search over the first quantified uh, variable. Um, so, 
from the uh, from the k plus one quantifier problem, we can re we can reduce it down to three quantifier problems, and we just need to show mm, the three quantifier problems are reducible to two different sets. And, and our theorem one says uh, two different sets is hard in three quantifier problems under randomized uh, fine grain reductions. And theorem one is implied by theorem two and theorem three. Theorem two says there's a reduction from for all exists for all problems to exist exists for all problems. And the theorem three says there's a reduction from exists exists for all problems to two different sets problem. So all the possible quantifier structure are listed as are listed as follows. Mm. For all exists for all and its negation exists for all exists by theorem two can be reduced to exists exists for all and its negation for all for all exists and from theorem three they are reducible to two different sets. On the other hand, these four quantifier structures are considered as easy problems where we can have algorithms running in time m to the three halves. Here are some examples of these quantifier structures. Heating set and graph radius 2 is the first class, and the graph diameter 2 is the second class, and the three click and the three independent sets are considered to be the easy problems. Well, the Theorem two and is inspired by the by the results stated in the last talk in the previous talk. Mm. That the heating set is reducible to orthogonal vectors in the dense uh, uh, structure, and we can generalize this result to uh, the sparse graphs, and we can show that um, formulas. Uh, mm, Quantified by for all exists for all can be reduced to exists exists for all. Next, we mainly show the proof of theorem three. We prove theorem three when from this following lemma. These three problems are equivalent under randomized fine grain reductions. The first is two disjoint sets, the second is set containment, and the third is two set covering. And note that this randomized reduction is the only randomized reduction. Other parts of our proof are always deterministic. Mm. Here's the definitions of the three problems, which we call the basic problems. The first is to this run sets we have seen before, and it is represented by this logic formula and this bifurcated graph. The second problem is set containment. It is to decide if there exists two sets, S1 and S2, such that S1 is contained in S2. It can be represented by this logic formula where for all elements, if it's in S1, then it's in S2, and we can, we can represent the implication relation using the negation of U is in S1 or U is in S2. And it, it can be represented by this bifurcated graph. And two set cover in is, is similar. It decides whether there exists two sets which covers the whole universe. And it can be represented by this logic formula. We can observe that um, the first problem has two negations, and this problem has only one negation, and this problem has no negations. Um, this means if we could find a way to complement all the sets where S2 is chosen from, then we can reduce from the first problem to the second problem, where we can replace the purple edges with the blue edges, then it becomes a set containment instance. Similarly, if we could complement all the sets where S1 and S2 are chosen from, then the two different sets are reducible to a two-set cover problem. Mm. 
however, we are not able to uh, complement the sets directly because we are working on a sparse graph where the number of edges is almost linear in the number of nodes. So to preserve the sparsity of the input graph, we have to think about um, other reductions. Our reduction technique is to use a universe shrinking self reductions on the basic problems. For uh, for basic problem problem one, we can use a randomized self reduction to the same problem with a smaller universe u prime, and then the uh, the sets s1 and s2 are mapped to sets s1 prime and s2 prime. Then we can complement the sets on this small universe uh, u. So it becomes S1 prime and S, uh, S2 prime bar. So we can show uh, complementing on this uh, small universe uh, can preserve the fine grained uh, complexity on the sparse graphs. Here is the example of reducing from set, uh, set containment to two different sets. Because the graph is sparse, there aren't um, too many large degree vertices. So for the large degree vertices, there are not many of them. We can do exhaustive search on them and then um, see if they are in the solutions. And then we remove them from the graph. So the graph has only small degree vertices. And then we can self-reduce uh, this graph to a smaller universe uh, U prime. And we can complement all the sets on the U prime. And uh, we can show because the degree is small, the error probability is small. To do the universe shrinking, we use a Bloom filter that, randomized, uh, that randomly maps each element of U to T elements in U prime, uniformly at random. Mm. So let H be the, be the uh, mapping function, and for each set, uh, which is a subset of U, we can define a set S prime, which is a subset of U prime. For the set containment problem, we can see if, uh, if S1 is contained in S2, then S1 prime is always contained in S2 prime. Mm, but if S1 is not contained in S2, and, uh, and uh, all the elements of S1 are unfortunately mapped uh, into elements inside S2 prime, then an error occurs. We show that the yes instances always map to the yes instances, and the no instances uh, with high probability map to no instances, and with the, mm, a small probability map to yes instances. In particular, we show that when the size of S2 is small, then the probability of, pos of false positive is exponentially small. The, Last step of this reduction is from the general for all, from the general exists exists for all problems to the basic problems. We define a hybrid problem which connects the two problems in the middle. The hybrid problem is a combination of basic problems where the universe is partitioned to four disjoint universes. And we are looking for a solution S1 and S2 that simultaneously satisfies the four conditions. The first is that on universe U0, they are disjoint sets. On universe U1, S1 is contained in S2. On universe U2, S1 contains S2. And on universe U3, S1 and S2 um, covers the universe U3. Mm. <coughs> we show that we can construct an instance of the hybrid problem of linear size uh, in linear time. Mm. Finally is the conclusion. Mm. Mm. We, we have we have proved the 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 relations showed in this graph, and if uh, if one day someone proves that the strong ETH is false, then the uh, sparse orthogonal vectors conjecture might still hold true. Then in the polynomial world, we can still have this uh, relation. And Finally, it's uh, open problems. 
the first open problem is to find a complete uh, problem in the k plus one quantifier problems. We can sh we can find a complete problem for some specific quantifier structures. For example, k orthogonal vectors is complete for problems with k existential quantifier and uh, one universal quantifier. But we don't know if this problem is c complete for general k plus one quantifier problems. The second open problem is to find similar results for dense graphs. The dense graphs are different from sparse graphs in the sense that if we measure by the number of edges, we can go through all the k plus one variables using time m to the k. So we can save one variable here. But if we measure the, the number of vertices in dense graphs, we won't have such advantage. So the design of algorithms will be changed. And the third open problem is to extend this result to the model checking in higher arity structures, which we mean from graph properties to hypergraph properties. The last open problem is to find the complete results for dynamic programming problems. The motivation is that we want to clean up more mass in the reduction graph. So, we found many uh, strong ETH hard problems have dynamic programming algorithms, and um, many of them cannot do better than dynamic programming. And we want to know um, what, uh, what properties do these problems have in common, and uh, we want to know if there is a complete problem in this kind of uh, problems. So you said something early on about a dense versus sparse case. You mentioned with all Ryan's, we got a um, much better algorithm for all k bigger than 9. Can yeah. you say something about why it's so different in a dense versus sparse case? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, in, 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 in the dense case, they usually use uh, the algorithms based on matrix multiplication, and in the sparse graph, uh, most uh, algorithms are not uh, based on it. And in, in, and in our example, we, uh, we heavily depend on, because the graph is sparse, there are not many large degree vertices, and for some, uh, and, and for, and for the large degree vertices, we can do exhaustive search, and for small degree, we have some properties. Mm.